What's up everybody, Takedown here. Welcome back to the channel. You guys seem to really like the story of Dwayne, where I talk about the past manager at work that I almost got in a fight with. So today I'm going to be giving you guys the story of Rero. Let's just get straight into it. So as you guys might know, I was part of the gaming clan called Mafia. Back in the day, we started the clan uh, we were only WWE gaming, then we advanced and we kind of expanded into other games like GTA, Call of Duty and such. We used to have a lot of crazy members and Rero was no exception. I don't think he stayed too long. He only stayed probably a couple months. Heard that he was into drugs and that, but that didn't really matter because our sole purpose of what connected us was gaming. That's what brought us all together and that's what kind of held us together for the longest part. Now, we found out that Riro was more into drugs than we have initially thought. He apparently was part of his own drug cartel and he was kind of the leader, or so he was telling us, which I didn't believe any of it at the time, I still don't, but that was his story. A lot of members started to believe him. I was not one of those. So at one time, he started saying about problems with his brother and problems with other people and that, and apparently it came out that he told one of our members that he got somebody killed. He didn't kill the person, but the person, I guess, crossed him with money or drugs or something like that. So he decided that he was gonna get them killed. I didn't believe him one second when he said that. Other people did. I didn't, it just, it just didn't add up. He started to state that he had so much money, he was making about five to 10 grand a week. And to me, that's a ridiculous amount of money but that's what he was claiming to be getting. So he had other people, he hired people, he had other goons, he had prostitutes and all this other stuff, which to me, it's like, okay, that might be true, but I was not believing it. A lot of members did, like I said, but I was not having any part of it. I was not believing him whatsoever. At one point he said he was gonna hire a prostitute to go to another uh, state just to hook up with a member, which to me, it's like, okay, that's extremely ridiculous and stupid. He was always flaunting his money, like I said, saying he had so much money. And then at one point, I guess he was saying the cops were getting on to him. So he had to stop doing it as often as he was. So he was only at one point making three grand a week. And he was stressing out, saying that he cannot afford things. And to me, that is bullshit. That's still a lot of money you have. He'd be extremely interested in a new game that came out. But he would not want to pay full price for it. Which to me, if you're making that kind of money and you want to buy something that is only like $60 for yourself, you can afford that. You're not just all of a sudden going to say, oh no, I don't want to pay full price. If you're making that kind of money, you're going to pay full price. So to me, I knew it was a cop out. I started to catch on to all those things. At one point, a member's vehicle stopped working. And this, of course, is a couple states away of where the guy said he was. So Rero stated that he was going to offer to purchase a brand new vehicle for the person. He just had to pick out what vehicle he wanted. So the member decided that he was going to say a brand new Camaro or Mustang. I can't remember which one. But to me, that's in a really expensive vehicle. And he said, yeah, no problem. We'll get that set up. And it just never happened, of course. So this whole time, I never really believed him. A lot of members did. And it went as far as he stated where our leader lived. And I guess he said it got it, he got it right on. I guess he hacked. Apparently he said he hacked. He got it. He got his address. He got all of the, the leader's information of where he lived. And he said he could do that for all the members if he wanted. Not that he wanted to do anything, but he just wanted to know where everybody lived. To me, he yes, he did get it really close apparently. But to me, that is just bullshit. It, he must have done something else. There's no way he's a drug cartel. We followed him closely on Facebook. He always claimed he had a lot of expensive cars, but he never drove them or never posted them or never shared them. He still apparently looks like he lived at home. So to me, it was a complete cop out. It made no freaking sense. Some of the members were fooled. I was not one of them. And then we ended up having to kick him out because he stopped getting on. And some of the members thought that he was going to do something because they still believed in the whole situation. They thought he was going to do something. He was going to get in trouble. He was going to, basically, he was going to come at somebody from the clan. He was going to make the clan pay, which never happened. So this whole time, yes, he fooled people, but he did not fool me. I didn't believe him one second, but this is kind of the story of Riro. I'm glad he's gone. Unfortunately, we are not considered a clan anymore because we were only down to three members that were actively getting on. 
and only two of us really get on and play anymore. So we took the name away, but we still get on as friends when we can. Only two of us really get on anymore, which is still okay. And I have a lot of time by myself now. So that's why I've been doing a lot of my schooling, a lot of my courses, which are going to be done really soon. I'm having a blast doing. But I'm going to leave this video here. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, please leave a thumbs up. And if you guys want to know more about former members, past members of kind of the crazy ones, let me know down in the comments and I'll get that ready for you. But I'll leave this video here. Please take care. Peace.